When growing indoors, we want to maximize the use of light to make sure that as much light as possible is landing on our plants. And to achieve this effect, we use reflective materials. It's common to use standard aluminum foil to mylar emergency blankets to panda film which is typically white on one side and black on the other and we also often see the very common reflective mylar that is found on the inside of grow tents for this experiment we're going to use this grow closet that we just built in an earlier video as the walls, ceiling, lamp and floor is stiff and in a fixed position. We'll be able to get accurate and comparable results when measuring the light intensity in the different setups. We've measured the Q2's light output earlier without any reflective walls nearby and we'll use these measurements as comparison. Luckily, the wardrobe's inner measurements are more or less identical to the square pattern we used earlier and we were also able to get the same distance between the lamp and the light sensor in both tests, which is 45 centimeters or 18 inches. This way, we'll know exactly how large impact the reflective walls have. We started off this experiment by measuring the wardrobe as it is, with plain white sides. By putting the light sensor in each hole and recording the measurements, we get a detailed view of the overall light intensity. And when we're comparing these measurements to the measurements we took outside the wardrobe, we see right away that even plain white wardrobe walls will boost the intensity a fair bit. After this, we cover the walls with aluminum foil, shiny side out. We did everything we could to keep the aluminum as flat and wrinkle free as possible, while at the same time using as little tape as possible. Looking at the results, it's easy to see that the aluminum foil was a lot more reflective than the white wardrobe walls. And don't worry, all of these results and measurements will be presented and compared again at the end of the video. It seems to be a never ending debate about which side of aluminum foil that is most reflective. So we cover the walls yet again, but with the matte side out. This gave us slightly lower values than the shiny side and if we divide all the values from the glossy side with the matte side, the values are differing slightly across the board. Possibly, as it is impossible to keep it completely flat and wrinkle free, but comparing the average PPFD gives us a good overview. This is also why we believe in taking several measurements rather than just a single spot measurement. After this, we covered the wardrobe again, but this time with an emergency blanket. These blankets are a popular, low-cost alternative to proper grow room mylar, and we've seen them in many DIY grow spaces. It is extremely lightweight and was a bit tricky to fasten, as it is very flimsy. But once in place, it looks a bit more nice than the aluminum foil, and it is also more durable and easier to clean. The measured light intensity was very similar to aluminum foil, being around 6% less reflective than the foil's glossy side and 1% more reflective than the matte side. Last but not least, proper grow room mylar. Surprisingly, the measured light intensity was a lot lower than previous setups, with an average intensity that is 25% lower than the glossy side of aluminum foil and even 5% lower than the wardrobe's plain white walls. Panda film. I personally prefer a white surface over a metallic or aluminum one, but when it comes to reflectivity, panda film disappoints. This surface resulted in 42% lower light 
than the shiny side of aluminum and 27% less intense light than bare wardrobe walls. And lastly, we flipped the panda film to see how much light the black surface absorbs. We knew it was going to absorb a lot more light than the other materials, but I couldn't imagine it was going to absorb this much. Looking at the numbers, it was just a couple PPFD better than having no walls at all. Finally, by taking the lowest, highest and average value from each setup and arranging them by size, we can quickly and easily compare the differences. Both sides of the aluminum foil and the emergency blanket did a stellar job when it comes to reflect light better than the wardrobe's walls. The grow room mylar and panda film didn't perform nearly as well and wouldn't be worth spending your time on if your wardrobe already have white walls. Instead of arranging the PPFD values by size from lowest to highest, we can also use a base case. One where we compare all setups against the wardrobe walls and another where we compare against using no walls at all. This way we can easily see that shiny aluminum foil increased the average light intensity by 26% or that grow room mylar decreased the average light intensity by 5% compared to wardrobe walls. We can also see that any wall is better than no walls, even black walls, although the difference is marginal. We can also see that if you don't have any walls surrounding your plants, enclosing your grow space with an emergency blanket can potentially increase the minimum light intensity with 386% and the average light intensity with 270. It's also worth mentioning that there are different brands and versions of both Mylar and Panda film, and this is probably also true for emergency blankets. We acquired this Mylar and Panda film from our local hydroponic store, and both of them were generic and unbranded. We've compared this Mylar to a couple of different grow tents and have seen that it produced about the same light intensity as a standard grow tent's walls. And this is also why we've used it for all of our PPFD videos. Alright guys, that's all for this video. We hope this information will help you with your grow space planning and shed some light on the debate about reflectivity. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy farming.